this is Sebastian Bach and you're watching Loud Wire. Turn it up. Your book was already supposed to be out, but it got delayed a little bit. Uh, was it, what needed to be perfected with the book to, uh, to uh, delay the release? Like, the spelling? Really? <laughs> It's it's six hundred pages. I mean, it's not. Wow, it's that, it's okay. there's a lot to do. That's, you know. I, mean, I, I love one. And you know, when people say it's delayed, it's not done. Like I, I'll put it out when it's done. Nobody. Sure. I don't. I'm not gonna hurry up and rush out my life story. Hurry up! It's like sure. it's like I got one life. Like yeah. Is <laughs> so there more? Is there more to write? No. Okay. It's all. Oh, that, it's all that part's written. Finished. Yes. Okay. But that's great because. I, I love it when uh, a, a rocker's autobiography is long and detailed. You know, sometimes people just put out like these 200-page books, and no. it's a little underwhelming. Uh, I don't know how many rock autobiographies you've read yourself. I've read every but, single one there is to read. Uh, would there be one that you would compare it to? Um, I don't know, because I haven't seen it yet. So I, I'm, I'm as curious sure. as you, but okay. my favorite rock bios are Paul Stanley, Face the Music. Yeah. Duff McKagan, um, Lies and whatever. Oh, yeah. The good. first one he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Keith Richards, Life. Life. That's a big, Though, that's a huge one, that one. But yeah. just reading it is so entertaining. It's awesome. And so, you know, I, I, I could never believe that Keith Richards, who's partied harder than anyone, has the most lucid thoughtful book <laughs> it's like it's like every paragraph I, I go that was such a great paragraph i'm gonna read that again yeah, he like, really is just a freak of nature yeah and i love and henry rollins way. books oh henry yeah. rollins such a smart awesome art i just love guy. the way he writes he's, like he's he writes fantastic. black coffee blues and yeah oh he's he's awesome al jorgensen's got a great book too his, cool. his is again a guy who partied really hard and yeah. somehow remembers it uh, That's kind of like my book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm excited to read it, so cool. I'm glad for that to finally come out. Uh, I realized today that this month marks the 10th anniversary of the Supergroup reality show. Yeah. That happened. Uh, uh, I was wondering, what are some of your better and worst memories from that whole process? I think uh, one memory was the review of Supergroup and TV Guide. It was a very short review. Oh boy. It said, super group. Well, it's a group. <laughs> really? <laughs> that was fucking great. That's, <laughs> that's a good review. <laughs> that's right up there with shit sandwich. <laughs> fucking spinal, spinal tap. tap yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, that, yeah. that's about as close. Do you have any, any, any good memories that you look back on or? Well, Ted Nugent's just, you know, not sure not like a musician to me anymore. It's just killing animals and shooting guns and <laughs> ripping me apart on the internet because I, I had a glass of wine and that's horrible. And really? Oh. Well, yeah, you can Google that. You think he hates right. anyone that enjoys themselves. Jeez. It was, uh, but that, I think that's at least proof that you can't just put a bunch of talented people into a room and expect them to create a masterpiece, you know? I don't know. I don't yeah. know what to tell you. Yeah. But I enjoyed that show because it was, okay. it was absolutely nice. Well, nuts, you so. were the one that oh, did. Okay. <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of people enjoyed it, but. Really? Oh, yeah. Come on. It, it's just, at least just the chaotic element of it was. I barely even remember it. Yeah, you, probably, did you, you probably didn't even watch it after it. Came I watched out. it, you but did. it was all about me crying about my dead father. And hey, your father just died last month. How does it feel? Is that what the producers are at the producers? Yeah, I don't know. How the fuck that? does it feel when your fucking father fucking dies, asshole? How the fuck does that feel? Bad. <laughs> How's it feel? Your dad's dead. God. That, that really does sound unpleasant. To, to Whatever. That's the, the show. It. That's the show. Being, you know, uh, a rock singer that a lot of people uh, really put on a pedestal and say, you know, like one of the, the greater... Uh, performers and singers. Uh, for someone like you, who is it that you put up on a pedestal and say, like, if only That's I could? That's easy. Yeah? Easy. Robin Zander of Cheap Trick. Well, yeah. I, I did a couple famous. gigs with him in uh, Canada, and I sang with him, and it was like going to school. It was like, he changed my attitude kind of about performing live. He's 
He doesn't go up there and go as crazy as he can and bang his head and go. He goes up there to sing, and yeah. that's it. And I'm like, I can fucking do that, and that's what I'm about to do. If we can end this interview, <laughs> we'll do that right now. There's well, I, 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 I don't right go now. on till an hour after I start warming up, so oh, okay. it's going to be a late one tonight. But Robin Zander, for me, is the greatest singer. The way he sings. The way he carries himself on the stage, he's such a cool guy. He looks amazing. Like, he's just a great, great vocalist. I love his songs. Everybody talks about the 70s cheap trick. I like the 80s cheap trick. Yeah. Can't stop falling into love. If you want my love, you've got it. Tonight it's you. Um, those songs are amazing. And there's some other ones too. I love cheap trick.